Yes, the Chiefs have won their second straight Super Bowl, and that really sucks for Chargers fans. But the good news is the Chargers may have found the man to end the Kansas City dynasty. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers together now for six seasons or eight seasons, but this is our sixth year as the host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. We're about to have to bump that up another one. It's about to be seven and nine. This is crazy, but thank you to the everydayers for making us your first listen as this offseason begins because you know it is your team every day. And to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe or follow for free on the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. David, what do we got today? Daniel, I'm going to tell you exactly why Jim Harbaugh is going to end the Chiefs dynasty. Also, Joe Hortiz is definitely going to make a trade. <laughs> there is no doubt about that. And yeah. will one of those trades involve Joey Bosa or Khalil Mack? We'll have to find out. Yeah, I mean, we all think that one of those guys will not be back with the team. But will they leave via trade? Will the Chargers be able to recoup something from that, right? That is the big question now that remains to be seen. But today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. David, it is Tuesday. We are getting into our... First off-season Chargers by or sell. Very excited about this one. There's a lot to get into, including this. None of us liked what we saw on Sunday. It, it makes you want to scratch your eyeballs out seeing the Kansas City Chiefs win back-to-back. But it also, I think, Hate gives it. more fuel to the fire of being the team that can stop it. Stopping them from getting that 3 P right? So I wanted to start this first buy or sell here with more general, right? Jim Harbaugh can end the Chiefs dynasty. Yeah, I'm buying it. Uh, I definitely believe this is a huge reason why the Chargers wanted to bring in a coach like Jim Harbaugh because Jim Harbaugh is a proven winner and he's not intimidated by the Chiefs. He wants this challenge. He looks forward to these opportunities just like he did when he was with Michigan when he had the challenge of beating Ohio State. He yeah. did it and he did it repeatedly and he relished in being able to do that. I think he absolutely wants to do that here for the Chargers. You know who else knew that Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid were in the division when he signed up for the job? Jim Harbaugh, right? Yeah. He just ended Nick Saban's dynasty, really. You know, they retired didn't win, him. You know, you just made him retire. I mean, that's. He's played in the biggest game. He's shown now that he can win those big games. And I think when you're thinking of the Chargers chief games, right, it's always the Chargers are so close. The Chargers yeah. play the Chiefs tough, right? In the end, they can never finish those games. And that has been what has absolutely killed them. And it starts with winning the division. That's how you do it. Make them yeah. go on the road. Make them play every game on the road in the playoffs by winning the division and see if they can do it then. They had one playoff game on the road this year. I didn't stop them from doing much or, you know, two on the road this year, and they still made it through Buffalo and the Ravens, which is insane, right? They had to go through such a crazy <laughs> stretch to do that. But yeah. they also have guys like Chris Jones and LeJarrius Sneed are free agents. Feels like the Chiefs could be better potentially offensively next year. But I do think that Jim Harbaugh took this job thinking, I'm going to take this division over. Oh, yeah. Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, that will run its course. I think I can end it, and I think I'm taking over as the next legacy inside this division. I just don't think there's any other mindset that he would have. I do think he can do it. How much time it's going to take, that's a lot harder because I, I don't know if he can get in the way of a 3 P in year one. Can he have the Chargers good enough in year one to take the Chiefs out in the AFC West? It would be impossible to say they could do it right now. There's still so much that is yet to be seen with this team and what it's going to look like. But I do feel confident he's going to take this away from them at some point. And the other thing is, they might not be able to stay together, right? How long will the, this current core stay together? And that's why the next buy or sell is this. One or both of Travis Kelsey and Andy Reid would have retired if they had lost to the 49ers in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I think looking at this is a, this is a real rare opportunity. I mean, uh, I, I definitely feel like 
I am. I'm going to buy it. I do feel like one of these guys would have retired if they did not have a chance at immortality, a chance at, at history, which is to do a three peat to be able to win three Super Bowls back to back to back. I mean, you can't tell me that that's not a, a very strong allure. I mean, they're all competitive. never been done before. No, yeah, never exactly. Been done. They and they want to etch their names in history more so than they already have. And if they do this. They will. They will be. They'll be immortal in the game of football if they're able to do this. So I feel like more realistically, just considering that Travis Kelsey's 34 years old, he's been in the league for 11 seasons. I think um, when you look at Andy Reid, uh, I think he's probably the one that would be more likely to retire if the, if they did not have this opportunity. Because you look at tight ends, there's plenty of examples of tight ends playing 14 15 16 or even 18 seasons if you're mercedes lewis who is <laughs> absolutely a, an yeah. animal i mean being 39 years old and still playing in the national football league at the tight end position is insane I mean, so there's antonio some longevity gates, there right? yeah He's antonio gates long, long you know time. tony gonzalez jason Witten. there's several examples of tight ends that have played very very long careers in, in the nfl but i feel like with Andy Reid, just considering what he has done, what he's already accomplished, he already has a couple Super Bowl rings, he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. If he didn't have this opportunity for a three-peat, I feel like he definitely would have retired and sailed off into the sunset. It didn't set in for me until they kept mentioning it after the game. Hey, we are returning because we have to go for that three-peat because nobody's ever done it before. And it made me insane because it's like, yeah. oh. Would they have just rode off into the sunset? You know, kind of a lesser yeah, sunset so. coming off a loss. <laughs> but, you know, is the same drive still there to try to go make history? Because, you know, three in four years isn't history. That's been yeah. done before. Right. Three in a row has never been done before. And you could tell how much that's driving them as if they needed anything. And the hard thing is just, God, it would be so cool if the Chargers could stop the three-peat, right? And oh, it's still please. going to be hard for it to happen anyways. It's such a gauntlet that would be euphoric AFC. though they, oh, they, they, could, they could get knocked off this was you know a, a team with the chiefs this year who kind of slept walked their way into the playoffs and then got really hot so it's just i i don't know what that core looks like if it loses one of those big three if you don't have the trio of a hall of fame coach and a yeah. tight end and a all-time great quarterback what does it look like if you lose one of those pieces it's coming but not going to come in 2024 but the next buy or sell is this I think we all think that Jim Harbaugh has a great chance to turn this thing around. But the buy or sell is the Chargers will win the AFC West within the next three years. Are you buying or selling that? I'm buying it. I do feel I feel very confident, actually, that the Chargers are going to win the AFC West in the next three years. And, and the reason why is because Jim Harbaugh is a winner. He is going to win and he brings some calling cards to the table that are tried and true. One, he is establishing a strong and consistent running game, which you're going to need to win football games in the National Football League. The second thing is a great defense. When he was with the 49ers, he had a top 10 scoring defense all four years that he was there. And for, for char the Chargers and for Justin Herbert specifically, when the, when the Chargers give up less than 25 points, Justin Herbert is 24 and 8. OK, so just imagine what this guy is going to be capable of doing with hopefully a much better Jesse Minter led defense and a really good running game to pair with the rocket arm and the supernatural ability of Justin Herbert to put the ball wherever he wants. I just think that is going to be the right recipe. I think that is going to result in, the, in a ton of wins. You give him a good defense, a good running game and an all time coach with a legend you know a really talented quarterback i think that right there is all the recipe all the ingredients necessary for an afc west title patrick Mahomes will be there the next three years it's unclear i don't think that i, I would sell the fact that kelsey and reed are both going to be there over the next three years without one of those guys retiring i don't see that happening and yeah. if you look around Raiders don't have a quarterback. Hard to factor them into the future in that much, right? That long. Neither do the Broncos. Even nope. with Sean Payton, they have a Russell Wilson contract that's going to be going through the next gonna three get right years. Out. They're yeah. going to be paying that over the next three years. Yeah. So that's crazy to think about. Anthony Lynn almost did it in 2018. 
We just saw the weakest regular season Chiefs that we've seen in the Patrick Mahomes era. I do think he gets it done in the next three years. I'm buying that. I think the future for this team with the precedent that Jim Harbaugh has set for himself, it is absolutely attainable for them to get at a championship. And I feel like by year three, this thing's going to be humming. I think this is going to look a lot more like what Jim Harbaugh wants. I think it might only take him until year two, but I feel really, really confident by year three. But we have many more buyer sales to get into, including buying or selling if general manager Joe Hortiz will make or won't make a draft day trade. <laughs> I mean, the amount of trades the Ravens have made is crazy. We're going to go down that rabbit hole and also talk about the fact the Chargers might be putting out some smoke screens out there during draft season to maybe get a trade back situation coming up right after this. First, I need to tell you guys about DoorDash, though, because what a game. But as usual, the commercials stole the show in my book because DoorDash also went all out for the game day, like DoorDashing stuff from every single ad to one winner. Car snacks, tax software, you name it, DoorDash. Send that to somebody, which is great. And somehow they were able to pull it off. But we learned one thing during football season. That is DoorDash is the all-in app for your everyday needs as well. From restaurants, groceries, to flowers and gifts. So next time you're running low on dinner ideas, pet supplies, or just time, you can get so much more than you realize delivered right to you. Whatever watch party or anything party that you have coming up, get it delivered with DoorDash. Football season may be over. We're in the thick of base basketball games right now, the school year. Let's face it, winter. I can think of a million reasons every single day. To use DoorDash. It doesn't take me much to get one DoorDash station. We just DoorDash something and it's almost always the right call. Get dinner for tonight, groceries for the week, or a consolation prize for your sad friends in San Francisco. All on DoorDash. DoorDash, your door to more. Head to the DoorDash app to get everything that you need delivered. All right, David, we have some more buyer sales to get in here too. And you brought up a really, really good one about their new general manager, Joe Hortiz. And it's interesting to see what Joe Hortiz will do because he comes from the Ravens, and that's one of the biggest things we loved about it, getting someone who was almost there from the invention of the Ravens. He was almost there for most of the, like, their existence. But someone that comes from a much more aggressive drafting and trading team. So the buy or sell today is this. New general manager Joe Hortiz will not make a draft day trade in 2024. Well, I'm very, very happy to say that I am selling this a thousand percent. <laughs> and the reason why is you just look at the aggregate total of trades that the Ravens have made since 2020 is 17. They've made 17 trades, just normal trades. You know how many the Chargers have made in that same time span? Seven, <laughs> 10 Crazy. less in that four year period. So it's just in the fabric of who the Ravens are. And a large part of that fabric uh, is Joe Hortiz. He was there in that personnel department, like Dan said, since almost the beginning, when he started yeah. as a personnel assistant, worked his way up through scout all the way to the top of director of player personnel. And so he has had his fingerprints and hands in the conversations and in you know the, the building of this kind of franchise and these teams over the years. So part of that, and a big part of it is trading and acquiring more players, more picks, doing whatever they need to do to get the type of guys that they want in the building. Joe Hortiz feels like he's going to do that exact same thing. It feels like it. And obviously he'll be his own GM and you don't yep. know exactly how he's going to approach it. Of but course. I think if you kind of read between the lines and hear how he was talking about draft day and compensatory picks and things like that that he's going to be very active during draft day in, in the trade market. I mean, I was trying to go back to see how long it had been since Baltimore hadn't made a draft day trade, and it took me forever because they've made a draft day trade every year since 2017, right? <laughs> they even, this is the crazy one to me, in 2018, you, people who always want trade backs, they traded back five times in 2018 and traded joke. back up into the first round to get Lamar Jackson. In that draft, the Chiefs ended up trading up with them in the third round because they wanted to go get Derek Noddy. The Ravens still ended up with Mark Andrews and ended up with Kenny Young with the extra pick they got for trading back. So they were Not masters <laughs> at trading back. They've done it all over the place. They traded Hollywood Brown on draft day for a third rounder. Hollywood Brown and a third rounder for a 2022 first round pick. They traded back two spots in 2022 and picked up an extra fourth round pick. They in 2021, they traded their starting tackle, Orlando Brown Jr., into second round pick for a first, a third, a fourth, and a fifth. This is someone who's done uh -huh. it many, many times and is trying to maximize all of those draft days. I mean, even 
They've had multiple trades on draft day in three of the past six drafts, I believe. Like they are the most active team in the NFL as far as trading back. I love that. I don't see almost no chance the Chargers don't make a trade on draft day this year, which is exciting. It adds it an is. extra flavor to it. But who will they pick? That's an interesting one because this tweet from Stephen Haglin from Guilty's Charge had me thinking about this buy or sell here because he said Joe Hortiz putting out OT smoke all spring because the Giants, Titans, Bears, and Jets are all in desperate need of one. And it's a great point. And you know, Benjamin Albright, I think, is where this came from because he said, hey, fifth, fifth overall pick, 99% chance it's going to be an offensive lineman. Whether that's the Chargers or someone else is unclear, but the buy or sell is this. The O-line rumors for the Chargers at pick number five is trade bait. Yeah, I'm buying that. It's definitely trade bait. I think there, there's no uh, question about it. And also, you just have to consider what the Chargers have on the offensive line. Like, it's clear that they, they need a center. I think everybody knows that. You know, Corey Lindsley is more than likely going to retire. 99% chance there, so that's something they're going to have to address. But you also have to look at the posi position of value and the players that are going to be available at that pick. I mean, you're probably only looking at tackle, uh, even if you w would. But I just think that considering the Chargers, uh, uh, situation with their tackles. Uh, I just don't see them p picking at five, uh, picking a tackle, but I would not be surprised if they were to trade back and then potentially revisit, you know, taking an offensive lineman later on from pick five, but I just don't see it at pick five. Definitely trade bait. I think that's most likely what it is. I think with the tendencies of Joe Hortiz and Jim Harbaugh, who have separately been people who built through the trenches, right? Yeah. Two different teams, but both teams that heavily emphasize and put a ton of stock into what they have in the trenches and aren't afraid to use high picks on trench picks, right? So I think that's yeah. why it's not, you know, maybe all potentially smoked, but I also think that the Chargers probably believe that they can get other offensive linemen to help this team, not necessarily in the first round. So when you have teams who are that desperate because the Chargers can't get out of Trey Pipkins regardless. They also have potentially a Jamari Sawyer back at playing, someone who's already succeeded, and I think fits more at right tackle with what the Chargers are going Agreed. to do than they, what they were doing in years past, right, as far as being a run-first type of uh, huge right tackle that can move people because I believe that he can. So they have options there, and they can't get rid of Pipkins. So you're going to pay three tackles in 2024, close to $10 million, I don't necessarily think so. Plus, you have, you don't have Rashawn Slater on the other side. You're going to have to extend him. But I, I think it's more smokescreen than it is legitimate. It's hard for me to imagine they take an offensive tackle with the fifth overall pick. You could probably argue potentially that it's the best available guy. But for me, I, I still think I'm going to have to see it before I believe it, unless they trade back, which I think puts everything on the table if you're getting more picks and have more chances to fill your holes. So before we get into if potentially we could see some trades even before the draft from Joe Ortiz, I do want to bring up this buy or sell, which I think is really tough that you brought to me, which is the Chargers have more needs on offense than they do on defense going into 2024. Are you buying or selling that? Yeah, I'm going to sell that one. I think the defense has more holes and not just more holes, but more important holes that they need to fix. Obviously, you have a new defensive coordinator coming in. You have a whole new staff. A little bit slightly different kind of system there, too, where they have different players that they're going to emphasize. And also, there's just more people that are probably going to be shipping out uh, of this defense than there are going to be on the offense. I think that you look at corner, edge, defensive line, linebacker, potentially safety. Uh, I think that's, you know, the, those are, are, are all positions that the Chargers are yeah. going to need to add uh, and change on this roster. And I think looking at offense, Obviously, running back, you know that they're going to do some things there. Center is a position that they need to address. Tight end, possibly wide receiver, just depending on how they look at it. I, I just think that you know there's more needs and more important needs to address on the defense than the offense. I would sell it, too. Uh, I think it, the hard thing is that there's so many uncertainties at this point because I think of if course. you're going by starting positions that you need to fill – Defensively, you have safety, slot corner, outside corner, defensive tackle, at, one, at least one middle linebacker. Yeah. So that's five right there, potentially six. You yeah. might need to get two new defensive tackles too, depending on how they feel about the guys they have because no Austin Johnson anymore. His contract is out. And no Sebastian Joseph Day, who was released at the end of last season. Right. So that's your two starting, you know, opening day starters last year, gone. Gone. Your opening day yeah. safety is gone, likely. Alohi Gilman, not likely to be back. Michael Davis, not likely to be Definitely back. Gone. Hard to say that Jasir Taylor is a starter. Eric Kendricks could be gone. Kenneth Murray almost for sure gone. So yeah. that means you potentially could have two linebacker spots filled there. We're talking about as many as seven positions they have to potentially fill on defense as far as starters go. Just yeah. starters, right? It's a lot. 
Then offense, like you said, center, running back, tight end, probably receiver, maybe tackle or guard, depending on how you feel about those guys. But I do think that the argument for offense and why you would pick someone like a Brock Bowers or Malik Neighbors in the first round over going defensive, positional value it plays a huge part there. And it's hard to argue that there's a guy at the fifth overall pick that's worth defensively going for. The other thing is the offense, I think, is much closer to being elite. If you're trying to just get at least one elite side of the ball, the offense is closer to that, in my opinion. So if they end up going that way, I think that's probably the thought process or just the best value they think is there is on the offensive side of the ball, which if you're going by the big boards and who people like in this draft, the first five picks is going to be hard to sell anyone on a defensive player creeping up into that top five. It just hasn't been that way so far. Things change quickly, though. The other thing is which edge rushers are you going to have? Do you need to fill both edge rush spots? Could both of those guys get traded. There's so much to say there. Does feel like one of those guys will be gone. Can the Chargers get something back for him? If they do, how much money, how much draft capital could they get from it? I think those are the things that are all up in there, and we're going to get into that coming up right after this. First, though, I do want to tell you guys about FanDuel because it's time to get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, a number America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all of your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and more. And let's be honest, I love the NBA. There's also March Madness right around the corner, too, and that is easily the best time of the year to be betting on basketball, of course. And NBA right now is definitely heating up March Madness around the corner. If you're still missing football, that's okay, too, because FanDuel already has the odds for the 2025 Super Bowl champion up, and the Chargers are currently plus 3,000 to win it all next year, which is tied for the 12th best odds. I think that's a Jim Harbaugh bump for sure there. Interestingly enough, the favorite to win it all is the team that just lost. The 49ers, maybe Chiefs have a harder path in the AFC. Maybe they're not convinced Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey are sticking around. But to get in on that action, just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Let's get into more of these buy or sell here, David. And thank you to everyone for continuing to be with us now that football season is officially over. We always appreciate the everydayers out there. And thank you guys so much for continually giving us our best years one after another and if you know anything about us hey we're here yesterday now the grind begins through draft season through free agency through any news you know we're going to be here the next day talking about or even that night if it's big enough so thank you to the everydayers make sure you guys are following and subscribing on youtube and wherever you get your podcast from so you don't miss it you guys can also make sure to check out the locked on sports today first ever 24 7 national sports streaming channel covering every sport the way that only the locked on local experts can unless you're covering those teams every day it's just impossible to have the insight that you get with the locked on podcast network so make sure you guys go subscribe there but this is the first buy or sell i want to get into here dave which is one of joey bosa or khalil mack will be traded before the season there have been some quasi reports out there if you can call them that that the chargers could potentially trade either one of these guys if you had to buy or sell that one of them gets traded where are you going yeah i'm gonna buy it i, I just think that you look at the the cap hits of both of these gentlemen and they're both over 36 million dollars i just don't know how there's any way that they can keep them both on the roster and i do feel like that one of one or two of them do have trade value i mean obviously you have khalil mack just coming off of one of the best defensive season seasons from an edge player that we've seen in, in the last 10 years i mean this guy had 17 sacks had <laughs> played in every single game was a dominant run stopper uh, was you know, a guy who was able to impose his will force fumbles i mean he was a man possessed last year like yeah. simply put he, he all was pro one of the level best, yeah he was one of the best defenders in the national football league last year so you can't tell me that I don't feel like the Chargers can't sell that type of production to another team that maybe be close. Think that they, you know, just need another pass rusher to put them over the edge to get them close yeah. to that that spot to get to the playoffs. I think that would be someone that the Chargers could probably, you know, ship out while his value is at its peak. He's also the oldest one, right? That's the hard thing there because he's also Absolutely. the older of the two. Daniel Popper from The Athletic came on the show, and he told us the more attractive piece the Chargers have to trade is actually Joey Bosa sure. and not Khalil Mack because teams are going to have a harder time convincing themselves that Khalil Mack can keep it up, even though we just saw him do it. I think it's a little crazy, obviously. 
I think that the reports you're seeing, the only person I've seen reporting this is Chad Forbes, who's kind of all over the place, not someone I know to be a credible source. So I'm not going to, you know, take this and run with it. It feels to me like more someone who is trying to get out of something they feel like is likely to happen. So he said that Chargers are willing to listen on Bosa. They are actively trying to trade Khalil Mack. If you can get anything, that's a win to me, right? If you can get something out of those guys, it's a win because you're going to have to release at least one of them anyways. Could both of them get released? I think it's unlikely still at this point. But what can you get? And that takes us to our next buy or sell here, which is none of the Chargers' big cap hits, the Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, will get them more than a third-round pick in a trade. You buying or selling that? Yeah, I'm going to buy that. I just think that you look at the the contract numbers that these guys are signed to, the cap hits, the, 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 the teams that they're going to trade for, are going to have to get, you know, you look at the injury history with these players, with the, whether it's Joey Bosa or Mike Williams. Uh, I mean, those are things that you all have to, to consider and you have to, you know, put into the decision when you're trying to potentially bring uh, one of these guys aboard. I think when you look at some comps here for trades, I think the first one that, that comes to mind to me is, is the most recent one, which is Montez Sweat was traded for a 2024 second round pick. But also you have to consider that Sweat's 27 years old and has also played 16 plus games in four of his last oh four of his five seasons in the NFL. Yeah. And and so that's healthier younger. Yeah, a lot younger, a lot more healthy. So, yeah, I just don't know if the value for the contracts and the players and the ages uh, are going to match up for anything other than a third or a fourth uh, round pick for, for those players. Yeah, we talked about Mike Williams, too, because it really Keenan Allen, I don't think, is on the table. So no. I'm not including him necessarily in this. I don't think they will trade him. But for someone like Cleo Mack, you have to find someone, even Mike Williams, who's a contender but has enough cap space to add them. Someone that feels like they can win this year yeah. because I think both of those guys are hugely risky as far as giving them another extension, giving Mike Williams his third contract, sure. right? even more for Khalil Mack, who's going to be 33 this season. The closest comp that I could m- pick from this was the Rams spent a second and a third round pick for Von Miller in 2021 for a rental. He only played half the season with the Rams. They ended up going to win a Super Bowl, but he ended up going to do that, and then they let him go to the Bills and sign with the Bills after that. So they only got half a season of Von Miller. They spent a second and a third round pick, and Von Miller had missed all of 2020 before that with an ankle injury. He was Khalil Mack's age when that trade happened. He also has a, probably a, a better pedigree as far as, you know, a little bit than Khalil Mack, even though Khalil Mack has been a defensive player of the year. It was just a long, longer time ago, right, than what it was with Von Miller. That's the closest one. I think third round pick is probably where you're looking at because the biggest part of that conversation that we didn't bring up, the Chargers don't have a lot of leverage. Yeah. There's teams that are going to get on that phone and pick it up and say, hey, if I don't give you what you want here, you're just going to release them anyways because you're $40 million over the cap. Right. That's what I think kind of pushes them down probably around as far as what the ceiling is they can get on these draft picks. It's just teams being like, hey, I'll take my chances. You release him. I'll just sign him. I'll give up nothing. As opposed to taking their contracts, which are huge contract hits that not every team can take, and also having to give up draft capital, and also potentially have to give those guys extensions, or you're just saying, hey, I'm doing this and trading this for one year of this player's services outside of Bosa because he has two years of control. So that's right. the other thing, too. You're getting more bang for your buck out of Joey Bosa because you know you at least have him under team control for 2024 and 2025. I still think third is the max. So I'm going to buy the fact that none of them are going to get them more than a third. That being said, getting a third feels like a coup to a certain extent. So let's get to this last buy or sell here just based on some comments that came out over the weekend, especially Jim Harbaugh saying this about Austin Eckler. We're going to have a huge emphasis on the run game. We've got to block better up front. Austin Eckler is a tremendous back, and we'd love to have him on the team next year. That is something that's not going to be music to a lot of Chargers fans of yours, David. Austin Eckler will be back with the Chargers in 2024 by herself. Sell. <laughs> Although Jim was complimentary of Austin Eckler, I don't see the Chargers bringing him back. I, I don't. They don't. They need to get younger, cheaper, and more productive at the running yeah. back position. Not older, more expensive, and declining. That's just not. That's just not going to happen. Simply but eloquently put, I would agree with all those. I'm selling that. I don't think, at least based on the history of what we've seen Greg Roman and Jim Harbaugh running games look like, that he fills that need, you know, fits that kind of role that they have for those running backs. He's not Frank Gore. He's not Blake Warham or guys that run like that, or as far as the guy they've recently had 
in Baltimore, obviously, you have guys like Mark Ingram they signed with Greg Roman there. You have guys like Gus Edwards and other guys too, right? But as far as what they actually like to do, what they want to do as a downhill running football team, I don't see it. I just really wonder what Austin Eckworth thinks Austin Eckworth's value is at this point. I think the other part of it is you have Tom Telesco now in Vegas that might be calling that phone. You also have Joe Lombardi in Denver that could be calling that phone. And let's be honest, this dude's been wishy-washy about what he wanted to do. He had a beef with the Chargers, and I understand it because they didn't want to extend him. He ends up having his worst season of his career, so it looks good for the Chargers not extending him. Sure does. Absolutely tanks the value that he has. And he's going into a market that has guys like a Josh Jacobs, like a Derrick Henry, like a Saquon Barkley potentially entering that, right? Saturating yeah. that market even more. You're going to pay Austin Eckler double-digit millions next year? I have a hard time smart. believing it. Not if you're smart. You're not yeah. going to. I love Austin Eckler. He's a multi-time guest on this show. He was so much better, I think, in those years before last year than Chargers fans give him credit for. Yeah. I don't see him coming back in 2024. I don't know what his value is going to be if he does come back. I can't imagine it's going to be for very much so we'll see but i don't know if he necessarily fits what the Chargers want to do now with this new regime change i don't i understand him trying to kind of leave the door open though because i hey, keep your options open but that's gonna wrap things up for today's show make sure you guys are back here tomorrow because there is more news that came out like navarro bowman being the chargers linebacker coach and we'll also maybe get into some chargers mailbags if you guys want to call into the voicemail line do that tonight at 323 323- 524-7924 whenever you're listening to this. And also you can hit us up on Locked On LAC on Twitter where we'll put a questions post out and you can get your question in there. You can ask in the YouTube comments. You can ask on Instagram at Locked On Chargers. But make sure you guys are back here tomorrow for that and the latest Chargers news because you know we'll always be back here. And to make sure you never miss the show, go follow and subscribe on the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. You can also find me on Twitter at Dan Talk Sports, David Drogmeyer at Dro Talk SD, and you can also find our Locked On Chargers Facebook page as well. But Jim Harbaugh feels like the man that can get it done, David. We are officially in Jim Harbaugh season now. 2024 has begun. The 2023 season is over, and the future is bright in L.A. But we'll be back with you guys tomorrow. Until then, take it easy, and go Bolts.